is my vintage Toro Commercial Recycler 2 22040. It's pretty cool. Um, it sounds awesome. Uh, but it has had a few issues. It's uh, kind of sluggish. I think that I need to clean the carburetor out. But it also, after about 10 minutes of running, starts to make a knocking sound, which I believe, and this is just a theory, but after removing the spark plug, there is quite a bit of uh, carbon buildup that I can see. And if I go around and show you the muffler, you can also see that there is a lot of buildup in there. So, if I can focus. But um, because of that, I believe that uh, that can be causing pre-ignition or detonation in the engine because of increased compression. I've read online on forums and seen that people have experienced this when they got their uh, mowers new, but they've ran them for years afterwards and still been fine. And it starts up usually first pole or so. Um, however, I don't want to cause any damage to this, this engine, so today I'm going to run it and I will show you what it sounds like. Uh, as it's gotten up to temperature and see if I can fix that problem. One of the things that I have done just before I do anything is I've installed a tachometer and actually adjusted the governor to have this thing run at about 3400 RPM. So um, I'm hoping that I can get this all started and uh, I'll show you what it's like. So go ahead and prime it a few times. I usually prime it about five times and that gets it started usually with the with the choke on. And there we go. I need to replace the primer bulb, but it's getting a little bit um, stiff. Anyways, I've got this little paracord that I've tied to hold this in place and let's see if I can just when I tear this thing down it should should get better but um, I've noticed it is not it is definitely not a rod knock I'll just shut the engine off it is definitely not a rod knock and the reason I say that is because I have tested it and um, I've moved the blade and you can actually hear the piston moving immediately without hesitation inside of the cylinder and so 
Um, it certainly is not a rod knock. There is a significant amount of end play, more than I think most people would be comfortable with. However, I've read, for, uh, again, I've read on forums, people have said that there is no spec, and I've looked in the manual, haven't found anything. So, I'm gonna leave it as is, unless I find a significant problem. And I'll go ahead and warm it up, and, and do some work with it, and see how it sounds after it's run for a little bit under load and warmed up to the point where it starts to begin that knocking. And uh, I'll let you guys know um, how it sounds, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at other parts of it and see if I can diagnose the actual problem of this. Starts right up. I wasn't filming when this happened, but just a minute ago, it uh, started to rev out of control. Um, I saw on the tachometer briefly about 4,500 RPM, and then I shut it off, um, and it backfired when I did so. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. I think that it's having, like I said, I think it's a pre-ignition issue, because um, that could cause it to want to rev higher if it's kind of dieseling um in a way uh it could it because it could be a lean condition as well and that's why it backfired or it could be um a restriction somewhere so a few things a few theories i have is uh one the jet could be clogged and that's making it lean um i will tell you though the air filter is ridiculously dirty, and I will be replacing it instead of just cleaning it, because I don't know what the life has been on this thing, but you can see in there, it is nasty, and I've already cleaned it once, so um, I'm going to go ahead and probably throw that out, but I'm not going to, I might clean it just to kind of get it running again better, um, but I'm not going to be taking extra time to really take care to clean it because it is very dirty and I will just replace the filter. The other filter that is questionable is the fuel filter, which looks to be the OEM fuel filter. And uh, I'll be replacing that as well. Um, that could be original to the mower and this mower was from about, I think this was a 1991 model. So that, that uh, fuel fi filter is nearly 30 years old. So um, and, uh, when I got this mower, the, uh, it was actually just in our garage when we moved in, not running, it still had gas in it, and the primer bulb was gone. So I replaced the primer bulb and I got it running right away. Um, it did not run great because the old fuel was so stale, um, but I didn't want to just drain all the fuel out because it did run on the fuel, so, um... It, it uh, definitely died a few times and lacked in power um, because of that. But once it ran through that and I got fresh fuel in it, then it worked pretty well. Um, so here's the things that I'm thinking. I'll take the air filter out and yeah, I guess I'll clean it. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, just, just clean it a little bit. Might blow it off with some compressed air and maybe soak it in water and do the oil thing might might do that um but i'm not sure um as for the engine itself uh if you look here at the exhaust if i zoom in a little bit you can take a good look at the carbon buildup in there you can kind of see how carboned up that exhaust is and that, I believe, is a restriction. It goes in really deep, and it's blocking that whole entrance 
and I can guarantee inside there is full of it too. Um, one of the reasons that that is possibly full of carbon is because I did run seafoam through this engine in an, an attempt to decarbon it, but I was also an idiot because I was new to the whole two-stroke thing, um, and I put too much oil in the gas, so it was kind of, it probably helped, but it didn't help much. Uh, because ever since then I've still seen lots of carbon buildup on the plug and on the piston and the exhaust hasn't gotten any better so um, it probably didn't help much and I believe there's still a carbon issue in this engine so if uh, if it is a lean condition the things that will fix it are the new fuel filter and the cleaning of the carburetor and that that will fix it I don't have to tear the whole engine apart and we're good to go I'll go ahead and take the exhaust off and decarbon that though um, to help alleviate new restrictions okay if it is a for whatever reason now I doubt this is the case but if it is a rich condition cleaning the air filter will help um, if it is something to do with actually pre-ignition what happens is the fuel it's not dense enough to the point where just the compression alone of the engine combusts it and so you don't get ignition from the spark plug it causes the fuel to ignite before the in the piston is at uh, top dead center that causes there to be pitting and it can damage your rod and it can damage your it can damage a lot of things in the engine so you definitely don't want that um so uh it could very well be that the problem is uh there's too much carbon buildup in this engine and the reason it starts to knock after it's been run for a little while is that once the carbon gets heated up it starts to expand and once it starts to expand, that increases the compression in the engine. It decreases the distance between the cylinder head and the piston. So normally there will be a bigger gap. And then once the carbon starts to expand, it can become smaller and that causes more compression. We don't want pre-ignition in this engine. It can damage it. And I've been concerned about that for quite some time. So now is the time where I'm actually going to go ahead and full on diagnose and troubleshoot this thing. Now we'll go ahead and take the air box off and that will give us access to the carburetor and all the goodies in there. Oh, that's the wrong way. Keep it with the uh, <clears throat> air box. I'll just throw it in these in there. So now I'm gonna see if I can get it with my fingers. If I can't, then I'll just uh, go ahead and you know there. Both got it. Nice. left. There it goes. All right. Now just take the Velcro off the tachometer. There it goes. Now this is going to want to come with the carburetor because there is a little hose that goes to the primer bulb. I just have to remove. There it goes. Nice and easy. There we get to look at the carburetor a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and uh, set this aside. <coughs> okay. 
So now, um, pause for one second. Got my tools that I need. And sorry if I'm blocking the light. It's towards the end of the day, so there's not quite as much light as would be desirable for making a video. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there just to catch any drips. Um, and hopefully the idea is that I can stretch this tube pinched shut over into this jerry can over here. Keep pinching shut. That wasn't too bad. Let's see if I can reach. Oh, it doesn't quite reach. Oh dear, that's not good. Oh, uh, all right. I'm gonna tip this and just let it drip back in. One thing that I'm seeing that you guys probably will not be able to see is the fuel that's coming out is not coming out very quickly. It's kind of just tri trickling. So I apologize for the fan noise, um, but that is just how it is. It's just going to have to be like that. Ooh, I forgot to get the extra fuel line that I'm going to need. Go ahead and wipe that good off of This is the hose and the fuel filter. Kind of get a look at it. That guy is filthy. There is chunks in there. So that could have definitely been a restriction. So now, break open the new one. This is the one that I got. It was a cheap one, just out of a uh, O'Reilly because that's where I get my oil. And uh, see if I can get it off with the gloves on. Ah, there we go. Uh, there. There we have it. It's just a little screen. You can't really see it. Bring it towards the camera. Just trying to get it to focus. It's so uh, hard to see, but it's basically just a screen in there help get fake stuff from clogging up the uh, carburetor. So yeah. Alrighty. So that's all out. And then the next thing that I also got is this fuel shutoff switch. So that's super nice. Should uh, work really well. It was pretty cheap. Just like that. Alrighty, so, now I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm definitely going to want those. I'm going to steal all of the stuff that's off the original hose here really quick. And just pull that guy off. And this guy. And this guy. And this guy. Alright. That's pretty easy. That's not the hard part. So this is about how long I need it. We'll go ahead and say, okay, so. I'm going to say we'll run the filter uh, before the valve because that will keep the valve from being plugged up by anything. Um, so I'll do the same kind of thing, just a short piece here, then the filter, then another short piece, then the valve. And uh, we'll do that really quick. We'll just go like this. See this piece here. Make that the same length. Should have grabbed some bigger cutters. 
There we go. There's that one. Not a very bendable tubing, unlike this stuff, which, you know, it's not bad. So, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes on. It could be more difficult this way. But, we'll go ahead. Okay. Now, let's see here. Oh, this is just horrible. Oh, gosh. Okay. What did I do last time? I did it, like, halfway. I got it started. Like this. Whoop. Like so. Then, I got this thing on. Come on. Here we go again. Uh, apparently I ran out of storage on my SD card, so that kind of sucks. Yeah, that's right. I hate you. Ugh. Okay. I don't think that's coming off. Um, it's not... Oh, there we go. Uh, alright. Hey, I can do that on the other side now. Let me get that... Just, just a little bit. Hey, okay. I'm happy with that. Almost. Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm just gonna leave it. That's, that's pretty good. Right? Right? Alright. That's good. That's good enough. It'll work. It'll work. Alright gonna be a son of a biscuit to get the thing on that little nipple right down there because I don't know how uh well actually it might not be too bad I just don't want to damage that thing and I don't know how it goes together so I'm not gonna risk hurting it if I can avoid that um so that just that kind of concerns me a little bit all right now let's uh oh let's grab one of these things Throw that on there. One of the new ones. Oh gosh. That's a feisty one. Oh dang. That one opens up quite a bit more than the other ones did. That's nice. Alright. Shove that baby in there. At least these ones aren't going to put up a fight too much. I actually don't know what angle I want it to be at. So, yeah, that'll be good enough. Yeah, alright. Okay. Let's just slap that back on there. Good. Okay, that was easy. Famous last words. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see how long this is now. So this is about... How long compared to the other one? And, uh... Go ahead and extra length we need. It's about alright. Okay. Alright, there we go. Nothing like using the wrong cutters, am I right? Okay, so that's on there. Awesome. Get the other little guy here. <clears throat> uh, set that back just a bit. There we go. Okay, so that's that. That whole thing is assembled, and it's actually longer than the original just by a little bit, but that doesn't matter too much. It just means it's got to bend a little bit more. Not my, not a problem actually. So, we'll go ahead. This is the fun part: is uh, seeing if I can get the new piece to get on with these old clips here. All right. Let's see if I can actually move the camera so you can see what I'm doing this time. Let's see here.
There we go. All right, here we go. All right. Now let's see if I get in there. I'm gonna be in shot. I might a little bit. That's okay. Okay. I just don't want to block the view entirely. So hopefully I do not. Actually, let's go ahead and point that this direction since I can apparently rotate it for whatever reason. Shove that on there. The whole train that tucked in there. Oh, I should have put that. There we go. How much is that on there? Oh, it's pretty close. <sighs> okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh dear, that whole thing is leaking. I really hope that I didn't break something there. Ooh. I think it's like a plug or something that kind of like pushes up in there, probably with a gasket or something. It's kind of hard to see, I know. But anyways, I really hope that that, I'll have to look at the, the exploded diagram in the manual to see what exactly that actually looks like. But. Sweet, now we have a fuel shutoff valve. It's right here. I'm actually going to adjust the position a little bit just uh, by rotating it slightly. Oh, come on. There we go. Just move that clip here. Rotate that slightly. Good. Go ahead and put this. Wait, where did the clip go? That's the clip right there. Oh man, that's, that's of course it's hard to get to. Ah, I hate these little clips. I'm just gonna come on. There we go. Up, oh, up, oh, it. Uh. Uh, oh, shoot. Ah. Come here, you little nasty boy. There we go. Okay. Okay, so. Now we just gotta get the carburetor off. Which is not gonna be too hard, I don't think. Uh, it's just these two linkages that need to be removed in order for the whole thing to come off. We can also get a good look at the cylinder. Well, uh a little bit um, with that removed because we can see into the piston. So, I think my plan of action is to just go ahead and see if I can bend. Well, I don't like bending, but that's what I think is the way to get this off. So, uh, let's see if I can pull it back a little bit. Okay, so I can pull it back a little bit. Um, however, I'm immediately stopped. So, let's see here. How do I get that out? Okay, so, this is gonna be kind of a little here. Little. Okay, so I need to put it in the choke position. There we go. Wait, yep. Choke. It's gonna push. Wait a minute. Yes, okay, that is gonna help a little bit. But actually it's not because okay. well let's see here. So this is your this is our choke va uh, valve for the air inlet. Let me just help you see a little bit better. Okay, so this is the choke, and right back there is the throttle. So, 
I can just get all this, if I can pull this forward enough, I can gently, actually if I can pull this all the way out, that'd be the best, but I'm kind of limited by the throttle, so we'll just go ahead and push that forward, take the hook out if I can. Let's see here, come on baby, so close to actually getting in there. Okay, now I'm bending it. Okay, so I bent it. That's okay. I'm not too hurt about that. This one is a hook, apparently. So unfortunately, the only way I can really d get that off... Uh, let's see here. Fortunately... Okay. Nope. I've got to push this up. see here <sighs> okay don't want to hurt that spring too much okay wiggle 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 it's fighting me so much oh I hate this so much ah oh. Oh. Okay, well, I hope I'll be able to bend that back. And, uh, yeah, oh well. Um, well, now we have the carburetor off, so that's good. So, kind of fun thing about this carburetor is you kind of see Makuni on there. It's a Makuni carb right from the factory. So, we'll go ahead and break into that now and see if that was the problem. Now let's get this thing taken apart. Let's get a whole handful of that thing. Wow, that's on tight. Ah! Oh, oh no! Oh dear. Oh dear. That was a disaster. Let's see if I can do this right now. Dang. Who? Who tightened this thing? Actually, I know it was me in the past because I've dropped the bowl on this thing before. Oh my gosh. Holy crap, that thing is on tight. Why did I tighten it so much? Uh, can I safely just go ahead and say, let's just go put it in the, in the vise. Just have it very gently clamped in there and it's mainly just to hold it. Okay. Wow, that is on there. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Lovely. Okay, now we'll just go ahead and take that off and get into your position that you were in before. Which was right about, right about there. Yep, okay. Nope, you want to see what I'm doing. You want to see that. Okay, we'll go ahead and put that in there, and gently, gently, ooh, it's kind of stuck on there, oop, okay, look at that, I didn't think it would have a plastic float, interesting, very interesting, alright, well, the uh, carb bowl does look like it had a little bit of junk in it. Oh, you can't even see that. Well, it does look like it had a little bit of junk. Hold on, let me just go ahead and I'm going to do something really quick. So now everything I show you. There you go. Now you can see if it will focus. You know, there was a little gunk in there. Not too much, though. So that's that's good to know, you know. Get that all cleaned up. There we go. Oh. There we go. Nice click. Click, click. I actually don't know a lot about these carburetors. Look, that guy. Oh, you can't see again. Okay. My 
uh, camera ran out of um, storage again. <laughs> Pull this little pin out for the float. I'm, I know the fl this carburetor was working before, so I'm not too worried about um, the float and things. There's a little needle valve. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, there it is. Yay. Okay. Little needle. Go ahead and take that off there. What else do I need to take? There's this thing up here. That was loose, which is probably not the greatest. See that? That was loose. Can we see through it? Can we see through it? We can't see it, but can we see through it? Oh, barely. Okay, let's see if I can see through it. So there's no way to see straight through it, but there's you can see through it on an angle. So I would assume that one's not quite clogged up, but yeah. I don't think I can really disassemble this carburetor anymore. So let's see. Kind of look in here. Hmm. I don't know what this is. Oh, that. Ooh, well, that's kind of gross. I think that's oil or sludge. Well, if that was in there, then what else could be hiding in there? I don't know. Let's go clean it. Okay, I'm going to clean this off camera, and uh, I'll get back to you. I'll put it back together. We'll do all the stuff that we need to do and see if it runs. Uh, film this before I left. Look at that fuel filter. Hoo wee. You can. There we go. Now you can see. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mhm. Mm yeah, that might have been a restriction. I'm just, I'm just guessing, but looking at how clogged up that is. I'm just going to say that that's, that's very possibly a restriction. So, maybe we found the problem already. Won't know until we put it back together. Won't know till tomorrow. All right. Well, I'm back and uh, got the carburetor all cleaned up. There was really not that much gunk in there, so hopefully everything just goes back together all right. Before? No. Okay, it was just being stopped. This right here is the main jet. can definitely see through it. If it will focus. Yeah. There's a good hole in there. So, not a problem. Uh, that was, uh, I don't think it was clogged in the first place, so that's good. But it definitely isn't now. Let's go ahead and thread that in with my fingers. Give it a little baby turn. Don't want to over tighten anything. All right, interesting. Let's get the float back on there. See if I can get this little guy. Oh, there's a hair on it. I don't even know how that got there. Just like so. Oh, there is a lot of hair. That's weird. I have a dog, so maybe it's on me, but I don't know. Well, let's float. Whoa, wait a minute. Is that upside down? No, that's not upside down. I think. Just like that. We'll grab the little pin. There's no need to clean the float, so I did not. But I did clean the carburetor body, because that was very dirty. Just sprayed it down. And, uh, let's see here. Come on. There. Here we go. That's our float angle. So, is that seating correctly? Oh, you can't see it. Hold on. I'm getting used to showing the camera. 
So, yeah, all right. Well, that's, that's not too bad. All right, I'll just throw this on. Why is my camera not focusing? Here we go. I have autofocus on, so I don't know what it's doing. Really, as long as I can make sure that this is seated correctly, I really shouldn't need to make it, that doesn't help, make it too tight. Just like so. Okay, well, that's done with the carburetor cleaning. And uh, let's get back to the mower. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let's see which way this is. That way. Just go around like this. I hope that that seal... Oh, come on. I hope that the... Uh... Oh, there we go. The... Uh seal here is good and I also hope that the bowl holds because I don't want it to leak that would suck okay I gotta push this more and lift up oh, there we go I'll do the spring first to make sure that's actually on there there we go and then I'll do this part here. This has become more difficult with the spring attached. I wonder why. Well, it's because... There we go. Come on. Come on. You're so close. There we go. Okay, so that's in. Now, I'm going to unbend it. I don't want to bend where the spring is. Ow. I don't want to bend exactly where the spring is. There we go. Make sure that this is as straight as it can be. I know there is a little bit of a twist to it. I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make as long as the governor is all the way back. And it can pull the, all the way back. That's good. And then... Wait, so all the way back is full throttle. And then all the way forward, which it, it can push, all the way forward is full choke. Okay, so that's good. Uh, just to make sure. Because when, uh, when there's no tension on the governor, it's going to push. The flyweights are going to push that... So, that's good. So one of those isn't destroyed, which is nice. It's always nice to have. Let's get the other one on there. Oh, crap. Which way did it go? I'm going to assume that it went like this. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Let's just manipulate that a little bit. Come on, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle. Maybe I should do this. No, I have to. I have to do this more. Okay. Come on, just get in there. How hard is it to go in enough? There we go. Kind of. Come on. There we go. All right. That's nice. Okay. Now let's just slide that back. Make sure that's still good. This guy needs to be bent back into shape a little bit. That's okay. At least it's really simple. There's not a lot that really should go wrong. That looks about how it was. And now that is choke. And choke does not go full choke, so. Hmm. Oh, did I just not. I 
think, uh, let's see here. Didn't that close all the way? It's supposed to. Okay, so. I need more action on that, which means this needs to be, I guess, more straight. Huh. Okay. Maybe that was bent. Let's see here. Okay, that's a lot better. Then that returns almost to full position. It's enough that it bugs me. So actually, uh, that's good. All right, let me. That's that should be good. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna go clean the filter really quick, which something that is not hard to do, and I'm just not gonna film that. Um, however, uh, I will have to let it dry, so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do about that. But I, I guess I can assemble this whole thing here. Uh, I will clean this really quick, though. So I'm just gonna go blow it out with the compressor, and then wipe it down with something, just to make sure that it's, uh, not dirty, even though it is. <laughs> well, I'm back now. <sighs> Just cleaned the filter, cleaned this thing out, blew a bunch of chunks of dirt out of it. It's all nice and clean now. I mean, there's still dirt on it, but that's okay, though, because I cleaned out the part where it's most important that there's not dirt in there. So that's all that matters. And we'll go ahead and put this on. Oh, but I do need to connect the fuel first. That would be important. <laughs> so for the first time, we'll just go ahead and connect this hose here. Just like so. Awesome. That's on there. And then we'll squish this guy. that on there good so close there we go that was way more painless than I thought it would be and I've got fuel shut off that's awesome sweet that makes me happy I don't know which way is which I'm assuming that's shut off and this is on that would make sense at least but I don't know it is nice to have though so that's super awesome got the new fuel filter you can kind of see in the back there so all that's supposed to go together um, the old fuel filter was very gunked up so I'm glad that I was able to do that uh, I may need to change the governor spring uh, and lower it just a little bit but as of right now I'm gonna leave things and see what we get out of it so I'll let that air filter dry because I just cleaned it and uh, once that's all done, we'll go ahead and put some gas in this thing and start it up when we can get the thing on. And uh, let's go ahead and put this on really quick. So I need to kind of get this aligned here, like so. But I also have to wait. So I'm going to pull the carburetor back and then get this hose put on there can't really do it with visibility because it's so short the uh, this is the original hose that was on there and what happened was I had to replace the primer bulb once before and when I took it off I didn't realize that there was such a short hose on it and that the carburetor wouldn't just come off easily so I ended up breaking that hose and making it shorter so now it's even more hard to more difficult to get on and off but that's okay we'll just pull the carburetor back just a bit more see if I can line everything up again oh. Where is it? Oh, it came off the studs. That helps. It helps to be on the studs at first. Let's see here. 
Come on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I just have to be kind of ginger with that because if I don't, then I could break it, and that's the only hose I have, which would really put me out of business, especially because um, that's the only... Uh, this this engine doesn't like to start without being primed, so it's good that that is done. I'm going to go ahead and put the choke on just for safety, just to make sure that, you know, just in case there's anything that could get in there, it doesn't, so... Yeah. Yeah, once you prime it, this thing starts right up. So hopefully, I only really have to do this little bit of maintenance here. socket on there. Doesn't have to be that tight. Just has to be on there. Alright. That's not going anywhere. No, I just need to get the little guy that goes up in the corner that y'all won't be able to see. really doesn't need to be cranked down very much it's just helps you know all right that's that you can go ahead and put the tachometer back in place just like this in the velcro okay uh sorry if any of that was out of focus it's kind of zoomed in more now <laughs> all right well let's let that filter dry and Throw that all together, see if it even starts. Take too long. Left it out in the sun. It's pretty dry. It's, uh, I think the wetness that I'm feeling is just the oil that I put on it. So, go ahead and slap that in there. It's much cleaner than it was. But it's not perfect, you know. I tried the best I could to clean it, but I think that my best bet is probably just getting a new filter altogether. But yeah, now we can actually try starting it, so that's good. Got greasy fingerprints on it. Well, the oil just renews the plastic. All right. Go see if this thing starts. Alrighty, you'll see it the same time as I see it. This thing going. Three. I'm gonna prime it more this time. Four. Kind of. Five. Kind of. Yeah. Six. This primal bulb is really not the greatest. Seven. We'll give it eight. Eight. Okay. Now, let's see if it does something. Okay, so, like I was saying earlier, I think I need to make an adjustment to that governor spring. Okay, so I will do that really quickly. It doesn't, you don't need to watch it, it's simple. That was easy enough. Try it again, see what happens.
Well, no backfires, but 4,000 RPM is not what I'm looking for. So what that might mean is that I fixed the fuel restriction <laughs> because it, it, it does seem like it's doing okay. So I must have fixed the fuel restriction or maybe it's running lean. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's, uh, let's run it for a second. And if it just dies, then we'll know that it was actually running like that because it was out of fuel. possibility is that I've moved the spring to the wrong position so let me try that really quick so I've been messing with this for a while um, I realized that the reason it was revving so high was because of the governor uh, not being adjusted right anymore because we've we've actually freed up uh, a restriction on the engine by getting it to flow fuel better so now the governor is actually acting as it's supposed to um, originally, the mower was running lower RPMs than it was supposed to be um, at the stock set governor. Um, and when it was, and now we fixed it, and the throttle response is magnificent. It's it's really good. Um, and uh, but the only issue is that I had to turn the governor down again, and I'm not gonna fiddle with it anymore. This mower was originally supposed to run at 3,000 RPM, so I'm just going to leave it at what it's at. I moved it to the highest spring, so that's going to give me about 150 more RPM. It's going to run at about 3,100 3, to 3,200 uh, RPM at full speed, so I'm just going to start it in low speed. Starts right up. seems to be a lot happier now it's running a lot better however there's still a lot of there's still that knocking sound so even with the the fuel restriction fixed there's still issues and I don't know exactly what's going on so we may actually have to tear this in, into this thing more but I love that It's just, it's so quick. Like before it would be like so slow to respond and now it's just like nothing. Well, if that doesn't explain why you should replace your fuel filter, I don't know what does. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the old filter or I'm gonna put the, the cover assembly back on and uh, that's why I'm in the grass, by the way, is because I have this off and it's not filtered. So the grass is the least dusty area that I can be in right now. And so I don't, I'm not too worried about the engine sucking anything in over here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that back together. And we'll go ahead and take that exhaust off and clean it. And actually take a good look into the cylinder itself and see if the issue is really carbon buildup and I have to tear the whole thing apart. If not, then we'll go ahead and tip the mower and tip it on its side and look at the um, underneath the blade and see if the pulley assembly, which is something that I read on a forum that somebody said that the pulley was what was causing the knocking noise. 
Um, there also is some end plate in the motor, so I'd like to see exactly what uh, it could be. So let's go ahead and keep going on our journey, and uh, we'll take a look at things.